Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about injuries that happen to children. And the reason that I'd like to tell you about that is because not every child is at the same risk of having an injury. And even when children do get injured, some of them do better afterwards than others. So I'd like to explain how some of those injuries could be prevented and also suggest ways that maybe we could work differently to help those children who do get injured. I'd like to introduce you to Isambard. He is a healthy and happy 18-month-old boy. But Isambard is one of the 400,000 children every year who get taken to our emergency services in this country because they have an injury. And six months before this photograph was taken, um, Isambard had his injury. And he suffered a severe school that affected his face and a lot of his upper body. And the cause of Isambard's injury was a simple mug of tea. And hot drinks are the single biggest cause of such schools in children. There's over 40,000 of these every year. They usually happen to very young children under the age of three. And, of course, they cause a lot of both physical harm and some psychological trauma as well. But the thing with school injuries such as this is they're potentially preventable. If we can help parents understand how dangerous a hot drink can be for a child, then we can help them keep their drinks away from children. These drinks either get knocked over children accidentally, or, as in Isambard's case, the child can reach up, grab the drink, and pull it down over themselves. Because this is the thing about child injuries. You don't actually have... It's not that difficult to spot what might be about to go wrong, OK? So if you can anticipate the potential injury, it means you've got an opportunity to step in and do something to stop that injury from happening. But why are some children more at risk than others? Well, there are certain features that make more children at increased risk. So if you're a boy, or if you grow up in a family that's got lots and lots of siblings, if you grow up in a family where you've actually only got one parent looking after you, we know that those will increase your likelihood of having an injury. But of course, the you either can't change them or they're very difficult to change. So one area where we could do more, I think, is to think about the environments in which our children live. And I'd like to show you some examples from Bristol, but I'm sure that you'd be able to think of similar examples from close to where you live. Um, if we start off with house fires, um, we know that children that live in the most disadvantaged households are always more likely to be killed or seriously injured in a house fire. There were seven children living in this house when it caught fire in Bristol last year. One of the boys living here was seriously burned after the event. But a simple environmental change, such as having a working smoke alarm or having doors that close, can actually help contain a fire and uh, protect children from harm. Another environment, the road environment. Bristol's got lots of busy roads, lots of heavy traffic use. This photograph was taken one morning when children were on their way to school. And the little girl in this photograph is actually vulnerable to road traffic coming at her from four different directions. Now, we can actually work better at helping schools design safe routes for children to travel to school. But we also have to get better at designing ways that will make people use those routes. Because we can put in safety features, but if they're not used, then they, don't, they won't help the children. There's a zebra crossing just further up this road that's not being used. And the last example, I'd like you to think about growing up in the street uh, on the left-hand photograph here. Um, the houses in this street, they don't have any gardens. Um, the street isn't a safe place to play. There isn't any green space close by. Um, so perhaps it's not surprising that if you were looking for somewhere to play, you might turn in the other direction and uh, find what's at the other end of the street, which is a, little, a local industrial estate. And in Bristol, we've had children who have sustained head injuries, having fallen from the roofs of factory buildings. Now, what we know about these children is if they do get injured, some do better, have better outcomes than others. 
And it's not just down to how severe that injury was or how good the quality of care was that you received. Some children and families seem to be more resilient, better able to cope with the trauma of having an injury. And this is an area where we need to do more research because what we don't know is how do we spot those children and families who are going to need more support to have a good outcome. So what can we collectively do um, around children's injury? Um, one of the things I'd like to suggest is that different organisations need to be better at sharing information on who is getting injured. If we know who, where, when and why children are getting injured locally, we can then plan together local prevention actions and then we can follow up to see if we're actually making a difference. When children get injured, parents often tell us that they have to recount their child's story to multiple different doctors and nurses and therapists in different settings. So I think we ought to challenge the systems of health care that currently mean that care isn't provided in what seems like a sensible and joined up way to these families. And lastly, I think we need to be better at following up the children in the longer term. Because if what we need to know is if what we're doing is actually helping those children get back to their school and get back to their normal activities uh, successfully. Because where we can't prevent injuries, what we do want is we want children to have as good an outcome as possible, like it was for Isambard. Thank you very much.